Hi everyone, Melthony Meltano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Denzel Curry album, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. This is a brand new LP from Florida rapper Denzel Curry. Over the past decade, he has assembled one of the most solid discographies of any rapper to come out of the 2010s, creative too, taking a different approach conceptually or even aesthetically with each record, and this fifth LP is no different in that it's another radical change of pace. For someone who's been listening to Denzel's music for so long, this record and its reception so far has been interesting to observe. I guess in a way it put me in tune with the guy's internal struggles, and also how many fans perceive his music. Because while Melt My Eyes is a very thoughtful and introspective project, I can't say I'm super surprised to see Denzel go in this direction. Yeah, a lot of his most popular songs may contain very aggressive production and rapid-fire rhymes, but from parents on nostalgic 64 to Clout Cobain on Taboo, Denzel's projects have always contained notes of social commentary and introspection, an awareness of the toxicity in the world surrounding him. But still, being a human and being capable of making mistakes, Melt My Eye sees Denzel bouncing back from a rough patch, a rock bottom chapter in his life, which I think fans would have been completely unaware of without this record, cause his last proper full-length zoo was just packed full of bangers and owed to his home state. But now Melt My Eyes comes to us after crawling out of this pit of despair and addiction and suicidal ideation, running on a hamster wheel of validation seeking. The bars on this record read like a complete and total personal reset, as Denzel isn't just flushing out of his life the vices and toxic behaviors that that he's rapping about, but also realizing they were just symptoms of greater problems and past traumas he was yet to fully process. And again, it's not as if Denzel hasn't shown a more introspective side in his records before, but on Melt My Eyes, that really is the main topical focus outside of a few tracks, which results in a record that shows a lot of personal growth and artistic versatility on Denzel's part, even throwing it back a bit on production that pulls from old school jazz rap, classic southern hip hop with a psychedelic twist a la Outkast even trippy strains of modern trap, and you guys have heard those blissful breakbeats on Zatoichi. This record covers a lot of bases, personally and stylistically, for Denzel. And in that respect, it's impressive, but with that being said, this project may still be an adjustment for some fans who are looking for another Imperial. So there are lots and lots of highlights in the track list, they're just not coming at you with the in-your-face energy of earlier releases. Melt Session 1, the opener, features musical accompaniment from pianist and arranger Robert Glasper, whose talents have graced some of the best hip-hop records of the past 10 years. The faint vocal harmonies and moody jazz leads combined with these pretty fragments of piano top a very hefty beat, setting the stage for Denzel lyrically to open up in such a bold and completely uninhibited way. Mentioning having suffered abuse, overcoming misogynistic preconceptions in his own mindset, being aware of his antisocial behavior, and trying to learn empathy. A lot of this ethos boils down to bars like, I'm deflecting my my daily problems within my daily life, recognize hidden patterns of my own demise. Does this track bring his most crazy intense performance ever? No. But what you will get if you listen in is the feeling that Denzel is putting behind every bar of this track, the way his emotions ebb and flow across every line, and that in many ways is more powerful. So once you snap into that, the appeal of the rest of this record comes pretty easy, especially on Walkin', which I loved as a single on first listen, with its loose and groovy rhythms, and standout bars like Massacres turned to Mascara, killing off my demons cause my soul's worth redeeming. There's also a cool, slow, southern hip-hop beat switch around the midpoint of the track that brings back a heavier, more enveloping version of the classic sounds of UGK and 3-6 Mafia. Denzel's flow even picks up a little bit on the back end, and the way his performance develops across the entirety of the track is just a mark of his, his talent. Worst Comes to Worst brings these very smooth, classic West Coast flows over hefty, hefty drums. There's something kind of dark and eerie about the vibe of the track overall, but Denzel's emotional clarity on this track just slices through all of it like a beam of light. As he describes exploring his own spirituality, feeling pressured by the world around him to be violent, and attempting to shield himself from the horrors of the world so he could focus more on bettering himself. Which I think is pretty relatable during a pandemic. Plus the pen game on this track too. Of all things my mental suffers greatly, they draw guns, so how could lead erase me? I'm baffled. <laughs> 
<laughs> that bar is not just good. That's like 1996 good. The vibes and deep thoughts on this LP continue to dish out highlights from here, whether that be The Last, which is a very spacey trap cut featuring more verses about trying to maintain some semblance of mental stability in a world that is growing poorer, darker, colder. There's also the Jazzy Mental, which features a beautiful sung chorus from Bridget Perez, also a spoken word piece from Saul Williams on the back end. And lyrically, Denzel comes through with compelling poetry about how controlling your own mind, your mental attitude, is the pathway to happiness and stability. The groovy, beautiful, and lyrically confident Angels features the great Kareem Riggins. And the closing track, The Ills, ties up a lot of the record's overall themes of personal growth and mental health really well. Even Denzel diving back into the spiritual side of things with some epic bars too. But I will say this, this record is not all just woe and deep thoughts. There are some moments of the record that really do pop off because Denzel does seem to be aware of this record in a macro sense and wants to flow together, not just as, you know, one long-windedly sad or just kind of one-dimensional experience. So he packs highs as well as lows into the track list. Now, some of these brighter, or more hard-hitting spots on the LP can be a little bit of a mixed bag, like the aggressive delivery and very washed-out vocal effects on John Wayne, for example. While I think this track is all right, aesthetically it does seem like a bit of a mismatch. Zatoichi, I do appreciate the narrative of this track in the greater scheme of the track list here quite a bit in terms of it just being about persevering, personal growth, blind leading the blind, as Denzel was talking about in a recent interview. Like, again, it does really tie up a lot of what he's saying on this record, but I'm still not crazy about how fried with distortion the slow tie hook is on this track, so much so that I don't really glean anything from it. Not that I'm dying to, I mean, looking into it, uh, seeing some of these bars about life being short like a dwarf and um, God forbid that us, me and life, get d divorced. <laughs> The production is great, though. Production's very good. There's also Smell of Death, which is a heavily MF Doom-inspired shorty with glossy keys and kind of distorted lo-fi production. It's certainly a vibe, but structurally is not developed as far out as most of the other tracks on this project. So, yeah, I do point these tracks out, but there are moments on this LP where it hits with something harder and it completely works. There's X-Wing, which is Denzel's sudden foray into a little bit a mumble rap with crispy trap rhythms and some auto-tune on the vocals on that hook where we get some melodic leads that feel like a cross between a little Cuddy, a little Travis Scott. Is it my favorite track on this LP? Not necessarily, but does it go over way better than you might expect given this isn't Denzel's typical style? Absolutely yes. Then Troubles with T-Pain, the unlikely combo here going over so well is, is pretty much the appeal. The song features a weirdly hard but also club-friendly beat from Kenny Beats. Denzel flows over it with his trademark growl. It's super catchy but then also really aggressive and grimy. It feels like what would happen in my brain if I tried to dream up a pop rap hit that would work for Denzel Curry, or maybe if I nightmared up a hit, a pop rap hit for Denzel Curry, I can't decide which. But then T-Pain comes in on the back end with a great feature that makes it harder to decide whether it's coming from, again, a dream or a nightmare, I don't know. And then Sanjuro is one of the hardest and most hypnotic tracks that Denzel has ever done in terms of its smoky and cosmic trap production. Also, 454 was a great feature on this track as well, not just because his voice fits the overall vibe of the song, Song, but I like how Denzel uses some key moments in the track list here to give some love to some fellow Floridians. Now, finally, I have to address the posse cut, Ain't No Way, which in a recent interview, Denzel described how this track came together miraculously pretty much by chance of everyone on it just happening to be in the same area at the same time, some of them working on music already. They just worked on the track organically, not knowing where it would end up landing. It just became a Denzel track on this record as a result, and the production and overall vibe just happened to fit on this record almost perfectly. And yeah, everyone's performance is an input 
on the track is great. Not only that, but the production is so forward-thinking and experimental, colorful, and wild with numerous passages and beat switches to it. The whole thing is really like, you know, within itself, a musical odyssey. The sloshy production and uh, little, if, if you could even call the melodies uh, <laughs> that are on the intro, topped with uh, Black's awesome refrain. Rico and Denzel, in my opinion, have especially standout performances. Uh, like, really with this Denzel bar? Holy shit. I keep going back to it. Um, run the jewels because I kill a mic on any LP. It, what? Excuse me, what? But yeah, another impressive moment from uh, this really good album from Denzel Curry. In fact, no, I would say a great album. Are there a few duds in the track list here and there? Yes. A few awkward transitions into this mellower, more contemplative style? Sure. But these spots only make for a few cuts, a few pockets here and there. The vast majority of this LP is some of Denzel's most layered, thoughtful and conceptual work to date, loving the personal angles, loving the forward-thinking production, loving the versatility, and overall in his catalog, loving the consistency. Because, I mean, the, the man just comes out with great album after great album. I'm um, feeling a decent too strong eight on this one, Tran. Zition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Denzel Curry, Melt My Eyes See Your Future, uh, forever.